Welcome to podcasts recorded live at the Center for Spiritual Living in Portland, Oregon. We have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the online tab. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center and its video podcasts, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living.
Good morning and welcome to the Portland Center for Spiritual Living. We are a science of mind community that teaches spiritual principles to transform your life and make the world a better place. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. All we ask is that you stay open to the possibility of changing your entire life simply by changing your mind. My name is Nancy Ashley, licensed practitioner here, and I welcome you and a special welcome to our Facebook Live friends that are joining us today. Um, or if you're gonna catch the YouTube tomorrow um, or the podcast, welcome to all of you. So uh, thank you to the band for their introduction here. We have a lot of things going on and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in order, so today, at 12.30, we have our annual meeting, and that is for everybody. Um, if you are a member of the center, you will be able to vote on our various issues, uh, but everyone is welcome. Today at 12.30, um, the website for Zoom is on, the link for Zoom is on our website, and it's also on the Tuesday email that Reverend Larry sends out every week. So um, please join us today for our annual meeting. Going next, in the, during the week, we have our Wednesday meditation, which this week is led by licensed practitioner Sylvia Kearns, and her theme is One Mind, One Heart, and you will learn how to open your heart to see a greater unity. Moving through the week, we have Reverend Larry's lunch with Reverend Larry on Friday, which is at 11.30 on Zoom. And um, this is continuing, uh, always a fun event with some uh, inspirational discussion as well as just seeing friends there. We have our Zoom groups for Social Justice Book Club, and that is this Saturday, um, May 1st. And uh, we are focusing on the, uh, specifically on the Asian American uh, racism uh, that is going on in our country. We have a book specifically on that. And everyone is welcome to join us. Again, the Zoom link is on the website or on the email. And of course, we have our 12-step program for women on Saturday morning also. So classes. Um, for coming up, Reverend Larry is going to introduce that. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, yeah, we have a couple of excellent classes coming up. Actually, one workshop and one class. And I want to spend just a minute uh, telling you a little bit about them. Uh, first of all, you may not realize, but the whole science of mind movement, the whole new thought movement, started over 100 years ago. And it was based on the idea that our minds are powerful enough to heal the body. And, and in the, the uh, beginnings of the science of mind movement, that was the real focus, was how can we use our thinking to cure ourselves of all kinds of, uh, uh, of everyday complaints and illnesses, uh, as well as serious illness. Well, uh, of course, to accomplish that, we use what we call affirmative prayer or science of mind treatment. And so we do have a, a workshop coming up called Spiritual Mind Treatment. Of course, you can use it not just for healing your body, but uh, uh, really for changing the conditions of any sort that you might have. So that one, uh, Spiritual Mind Treatment, is facilitated by Reverend Marilyn Sprague. Uh, it's a two-session workshop, Saturdays on May 8th and May 22nd from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock Pacific time. So you'll want to, uh, to sign up for that and learn how to do this, uh, this thing that we call science of mind treatment. Also focusing on the idea of the mind-body experience, uh, Reverend, uh, excuse me, uh, Kate Barrett and Kathy Batten, two of our practitioners, will be teaching a whole class on revealing wholeness, getting into to some detail about that mind and body connection, mixing in modern science uh, with some of our uh, standard spiritual principles and practices for promoting wholeness in our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. So that class, it's seven weeks long on Thursdays. It starts uh, May 20th and goes through uh, July 1st, and it's 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific time. 
Uh, that one, too, you, you may want to consider signing it up for it this week. I think this is the last Sunday that the early bird special is, uh, is in effect. So this would be a good time to sign up for that one before the price goes up a little bit. What I know is either of these two opportunities for education can really move you beyond where you are right now. So please consider signing up for one or both of them. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Larry. You know, we always say that we are a teaching order. And although I am a licensed practitioner, everybody who is using the science of mind is a practitioner. And uh, you can learn more and more about how to practice science of mind through these classes. So next Sunday, we've got today, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, next Sunday, uh, we have a special, it is called the International Day of Laughter, and we can all use that. So Reverend Marilyn Sprague is hosting a laughter fest at 12.30 p.m. Uh, on Zoom, and you can sign up to reserve your free space for that. Um, we could all use a little something after all this pandemic. So uh, she's also kicking off six weeks of Merrific Mondays, starting uh, May 10th at 4.30 p.m., and it's part of a Go for Joy virtual ministry. So um, I think we all can understand that after this um, horrific year we've had, now we have a Merrific Monday uh, to designed to heal and inspire us through the use of therapeutic laughter. And you can register for this also, and it is free complimentary program. So um, lots of things going on. If you are not yet on our mailing list, please consider signing up on our homepage on our website, cslportland.org, and enter your name and email on the bottom of the right-hand column on the uh, website, and you will get the fabulous email that Reverend Larry sends out every Tuesday that tells you everything you need with all the Zoom links, with everything, the date, the time. Um, I don't know what we'd do without it. So if you're not getting that, please consider signing up uh, so that you can get the, the um, full force of everything that's going on. Our flowers, again, are by our uh, congregant, um, Kat Jacobs. Thank you, Kat, every week. And our special music today is by Lauren Steele, who is maybe letting mom sleep in a little bit this morning. Um, she will be doing the, the um, opening and then also her own special music. So thank you, Lauren. And um, I think that's about it. Okay, thank you. God is, I am right here, right now, right here, right now, God is, I am. God is, I am right here, right now, right here, right now, God. Right here, 
And so in this now moment, we move into that space of complete knowing the divinity that surrounds us, the one power of life, that one presence of infinite, eternal, unconditional love, that law of cause and effect, the wisdom, the wholeness, the unity, all of these beautiful qualities are in through and as every aspect of the universe everywhere present in every person place and thing it is all one and it is everywhere and that means that i am a unique individualized expression of this oneness that all of these qualities of the divinity are within me as me and that i they are available for me to use as i go through my life co-creating this beautiful life. And as this is true for me, I knew it's true for every person here, every person that can hear this prayer. We know that we are all unique vehicles for the expression of the divine, of God, of spirit in our lives, guiding and supporting us always to our highest and best good. And so I just claim and affirm for us all today that there is a sense of divine action, that we are able to make the highest and best choices for ourselves as we go through the day, that we are able to be mindful and recognize the choice points that we have, and there are many through the day, that we are able to be always conscious of our own divinity, of our own being a special vehicle for the expression of God in our lives, bringing love and light to all we encounter. And so I just claim and affirm for each of us that we are able, through the guidance and support of Spirit, to make the highest and best choices for our divine action throughout the day, throughout the week, that as we practice this, we become more and more in alignment with the divinity within. And so I just give thanks for all of this, for knowing this truth and knowing that it's always available, that we are able to use the law of cause and effect to co-create these magnificent lives and so I give thanks for this, for knowing this truth, for knowing that it's working with me and with each one of us here right now. And so I just release my word into the action and activity of the law, knowing that it is already done. The law works with us and says yes to all of our highest faith, beliefs, thoughts, that the law is always working with us, for us. And so I just release this, I let it be, and together we say, and so it is. And as we go into a few moments of silence, I just invite us to experience that feeling, that feeling of divinity within us, that spiritual uplift that comes when we are in tune with the one.
are making sense of senseless time. You're not being lazy. You are wrestling your own restless mind. So give yourself grace. of grace Ooh. and your body's changing things are rearranging in your skin call for celebrating each and every lovely shape you're in You're not all alone now mm -hmm. Someone thought about you twice today Look how much you've grown now Finding comfort in your own space So give yourself grace Ooh, ah, ah. give yourself grace Ooh, you could learn piano or you could watch the office episode three for the 25th time the way is all right Thank you so much, Lauren. <laughs> Not only a beautiful song, but the reminder is spot on, right? <laughs> we could all use a little grace, and it is there for us. Well, today we're finishing out our work in the book uh, Big Dream, or Dream Big, I mean, by Bob Goff. And, uh, you know, we're, we're poised to put things in motion. You might think that we've been preparing all month for the idea of realizing our dreams. And, and today we're going to talk about actually doing just that, about putting the, what do they say, the, the, the pedal to the metal? or I, I can't remember how that goes now, but the idea of actually making some forward motion. So far this month we've talked about who we are and where we are, because we have to start from someplace. And then we talked a little bit about the idea of what our dreams are. What really do we want to see to be different in our lives, and how can we go about that? And so uh, last week, uh, Reverend Marilyn explained that, that it's knowing pretty much what you want, but leaving the how up to God. So, so we don't have to have it all figured out. It's okay that our dream is bigger than our current experience. It's okay that our, our big dream, we don't know how to get there, as long as we can articulate what that big dream is. So today I want to take that to the next step then, the implementation phase, if you will. And uh, there are a couple issues that we need to be aware of. One of them, and I think in some ways this is the most important one, it's the idea of moving beyond wanting something into having something. Now, 
We've kind of sneakily built up this idea of mental equivalence over the month, of having a, a clear idea of what it is we want. And uh, uh, I know one week I led you in a meditation, and Reverend Marilyn teased you with some further ideas of clarifying what we want. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What, what would success be like? What would love be like? What would the great job or the perfect house be like? We've been in our minds creating what Ernest Holmes, the, the founder of Science of Mind, would call a mental equivalent. But I would suggest that mental equivalence can still be about wanting something rather than actually having something. So, so picture in your mind along with me, maybe you've wanted all of your life to, to finish out a college degree or to get some other uh, uh, level of education that you don't currently have, right? And so in building a mental equivalent, maybe we've pictured ourselves taking classes. Maybe we've pictured ourselves uh, in the process of working with a counselor at the school. We've, we've seen ourselves in the college bookstore <laughs> buying books, and we've pictured ourselves taking exams and writing papers and things like that. But do you see how I could have that same vision wanting it as I would have having it? The actual vision, the actual picture in our head really isn't much difference uh, between wanting a thing and having a thing. The picture is the picture. It involves these elements and I can envision it. I can sense it. And whether I'm I'm wanting it, whether I'm dreaming about it, or whether I actually have it, I don't know that the picture would be that much different, right? Well, the author of the book reminds us of one of the famous teachings of Jesus the Master Teacher. It is done unto us as we believe. Not as we dream, not as we hope, not as we pine away for her, but as we actually believe that, that it's for us, that we have it, that we embody it, that we accept it, that it's part of our lives. And so one of the action steps, one of the ways that we become an action figure here is to take it from that idea of wanting it or pining away for it or longing for it into that sense of having it. And if you're game, I'd like to do just a little bit of an exercise with you. If you're willing, close your eyes for a moment. I'm going to pick something that I think, at least I imagine, that we could all embody more of, and that would be uh, affluence. That would be abundance in our lives. So, so just for a moment, and of course, if you don't want any more affluence in your lives, tune out, but, but I'm thinking we could all use a, a little more, a little more comfort, a little more money, uh, a little more uh, support. And so for a moment, just close your eyes, and I'd like you to visualize a few things. Maybe visualize opening your bank statement or, or looking at your bank account online and just sense yourself being pleased with the results. Just imagine opening up that statement or logging on and seeing more zeros on the correct side of things for a change. A and just imagine your face lighting up, noticing that, that maybe there's a million dollars in there or more. Noticing that that all of your bills could be paid. You could just write checks or do some automatic transactions to pay off all of your bills. How does that feel? Now, you see, we're beginning to take it from the idea of wanting it. I want a million dollars into actually how would we use it? How would it feel to have more affluence in our lives? So we don't just picture getting the money we can begin picture using the money. I'm paying my bills. I'm looking at my bank statement. I'm imagining myself in the kind of a house that I could pay for with that much cash. Do you see the difference here? Sometimes in our longingness, we just picture the thing, the million dollars, the, uh, I, I don't know, whatever, whatever represents affluence and uh, and the diversity of, of support that you might have. Sometimes we imagine the thing, but not the, what the thing would do for us, and not how we interact with the thing. 
But you see, that's the next step in really embodying your dream, taking it from wanting something to having something. Just visualize all of your bills marked paid. Or, or maybe when they come in the mail, you open them and you just automatically see there's no balance due. You have a positive balance. Imagine yourself maybe booking some trips that are easily paid for. Imagine yourself being asked to be up on stage and receiving awards for your philanthropy. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm taking us beyond the wanting and into the having. When I achieve my goal, whether it be in a career or whether it be abundance, whether it be a goal around uh, uh, good relationships or whatever it might be, we have to take it that additional step. Imagine meeting with your financial planner to be making investment choices that satisfy you and help build a better world. Imagine yourself making good investments and, uh, and seeing those investments prosper out in the world. Do you see, it's not just getting the money. It's about being affluent. It's about the changes in you necessary for, for being affluent. Okay, you can open your eyes. You know, um, it's interesting. Every year you can normally find some kind of a newspaper article that details someone who has won, oh, I don't know, let's say $10 million in the lottery. And almost always what you will see at the end of the story is that those people have lost the money, that in a fairly short time they've spent it, they've gambled away. In, in some mechanism, they no longer have that money. I think the reason for that isn't that people are dumb, isn't that people make bad decisions. I think that there is a different consciousness between wanting and having. I think there's a different consciousness that says, I'm going to be the lucky one and win the lottery. I think that's a very different consciousness from, I'm the stable one who's good at investing. Do you see the difference there? It's like maybe it's not that hard to win the lottery. All you have to do is believe you can. I just have to be the person that believes in what? In luck. In my good luck. But that is a very different person from the person who has the means to do what they want in an ongoing way throughout the rest of their lives. Someone who can handle money and invest money and is interested in making investments and working with other people to grow money and prosper other people besides themselves as well. Right? There's a big difference between a, a winner of a lottery and an entrepreneur. There's a very big difference from someone who wants to be rich and someone who naturally can invest money and make wise decisions for growing the, the money that they already have. Okay, well, I've talked enough about this idea of taking it from the wanting to the having, but it's key. What I know is it's absolutely key. Jesus was right. It is done to us as we believe, and I have to believe that my good is mine. I have to believe that I'm the kind of person that deserves the good life, that deserves the loving life, that deserves the, the uh, equanimity to be out in the world and, and be in peace and harmony with the people and things around me. All of these are just ways of thinking, but it requires me to make some changes in me. I have to be a little different to be a haver than I do to be a wanter. A wanter just requires desire, just can look around and say, gosh, I'd like to have that car. Gosh, I'd like to live there. Wouldn't that career be fabulous? Wanting is a great thing, but it's not until we begin orienting, reorienting ourselves, it's not until we begin thinking of ourselves as already having that and what needs to change in me to support that. 
That, you know, initially we talked about maybe the idea of going back to school and getting a degree. Am I the kind of person who's a good studier? You know, that could be actually important, right? <laughs> maybe I don't focus on the degree. I focus on becoming the kind of person who's a good studier and who isn't afraid of taking tests and, and can write papers with some validity and making sense, right? I have to become the person who's a good student if I want to pass my exams. If I want to hold on to the money that I win in the lottery, I have to be the person who's good with money, who is good at connecting with other people who are financial planners and investment counselors and so on. I have to actually become a little bit of a different person in order to be successful, in order to be the haver, in order to, to feel myself in that picture of the relationship I want or the job I want, the retirement plan I want, or you know, whatever it is. I have to be that person that has it. And what does that person need? Now this leads us into the next question, and that's taking action. What action do I need to take? You know, it goes beyond the idea of buying that lottery ticket, right? It goes beyond something that isn't outward, but it's something inward. The action steps. If I want to be the next action hero, the next action figure, the actions I need to take are usually actions around myself. What do I need to become a better parent? What do I need to become that vision of someone that has the kind of support I want? Is it additional training that I need? Is it additional experience? Am I willing to find a mentor who maybe knows more about that than what I do? I need to begin planning my own catharsis, my own way of change, my own uh, action steps towards this goal. And almost always it will require me being a little bit different of a person. Uh, I think it's time for my joke, and it's a short one today. So... Um, <laughs> you probably remember this one because it's one that I told some time ago. So a pig and a chicken have decided to go into business together and they're going to start a, a nice breakfast restaurant and it's called Ham and Eggs. Trouble is, the chicken is involved, but the pig has to be all in. And that's what I'm suggesting is the action steps that need to be taken here. In order to go from that wishfulness into the idea of having, you have to be all in. You have to be willing to sacrifice the old you into becoming the new you. And it requires a few things to think about. First of all, action figures always have a plan. Now, they may not know the end, right? We're back to that idea of God can fill in the how for you. But a good action hero in any movie I've ever seen has a plan. Now, it may not work out, but they at least have an initial plan for taking that next step right? It's, it's, you know, in some of the action movies, what? They, they arm themselves to the teeth with whatever they need to, to attack the enemy or, or, or to prevail. And in other action uh, movies, it's a detailed plan for, I don't know, breaking into uh, some kind of a fortress or, or, or for uh, uh, making their way into a computer system. I, I don't know what it is, and they don't always know the end of the plan, but they know the next step. They know they have to prepare. They know they have to make themselves ready. And they're all in. All of the action movies I see, oh my gosh, are they all in. They're, they're all in to the point of risking everything. Now, I'm not suggesting we need to go that far. We don't literally have to be the pig serving the ham in, in the breakfast restaurant with the chicken. But I do want to suggest we have to be on the edge of yikes. Does everybody know what it means to be on the edge of yikes? Have you heard the phrase yikes, <laughs> right? It's, it's like when you're in an inner tube on the Mackenzie River down in Eugene and you go over that first little waterfall. It's like you get closer and you get closer and you get closer and then suddenly you can see it's about a four foot dry up and you're like, yikes. It's like you know nothing bad really is going to happen, but you also know that you're putting up a little bit of a risk. You know that delight is ahead, 
But you also know that the inner tube might flip over and you're going to have to do a little bit of swimming. Do you know what I mean? It's that willingness to live in the potential yikes. It's right on the edge of, I don't know exactly how this is going to turn out, but I know the end goal of me having a fabulous day on the river is at hand. There might be some minutes during that day where I feel a little risky, where I I, I better have a backup plan. What if my backpack totally gets wet when the inner tube turns over, right? It's like, how am I going to get home? Can I get on the bus at the Valley River Center when I'm soaking wet? Do you know what I mean? It's like we have a plan and maybe we even have a backup plan. We're willing to take some risk. We're willing to get wet because we know without question that we're in the middle of having a wonderful day. So what's your wonderful day? We've talked about it over the last couple of weeks. What is your big dream? What is it that you want to achieve in your life? What kind of success? What kind of love? What kind of intimacy? What kind of support? What is that big dream? And are you all in? Are you willing to be on the edge of yikes? Are you willing to have a few risky moments because because you know in your heart of hearts that it is done unto you as you believe and you believe in your success? You believe that that joy will be yours. You believe that that intimate relationship is here for you now. And little by little, you take the next step You take the next step. Every now and then, one of them will put you right on the edge of yikes, right? I have never done this before. I'm going to give it a try. I have a plan. I have a backup plan. Oh, and did I mention I have a backup to my backup plan just in case I get all wet? And then you take the next step and so on and so forth. That is how we implement our big dream. So I want to recap again this overall process just a little bit. First of all, we have to know who and what we are right now. I can't make progress in this world unless I have done some self-examination. Do I know what I'm capable of? Do I know where my bleeding edges are? Do I know some of the things I need to let go of and be willing to risk? The first step is self-awareness. Who am I? Where am I? The second step is really articulating what the dream is. I want to go back to school and get my degree. I want to take this relationship to the next level of intimacy. I want to find a job that really uses the skills that I have and that I enjoy. The big dream, first of all, must be articulated And it's okay if in the beginning it just seems like something you want, something that almost seems impossible, because at that point, that's when we make the bargain with spirit. We say, I have the dream of what, and spirit is going to provide the means of how. And it's it's like a contract. You will keep up your side of it to keep the vision clear, to put your time and attention into it, I will work on this vision every day, at least some. I'm up for the task. I'm all in. I don't care that I I don't know all the hows because that's God's part of the bargain. That's God's part of the deal. When I put my effort forth, when I am all the way in, God will do God's job of making the path clear, of providing that idea for the following step and the following step. All right, well, let me summarize uh, about today. So earlier this month, we've learned and clarified our big dream, and today we've moved from wanting this dream to having this dream. What do I need to become in order for this dream to be implemented? How do I have to be different? What training do I need? What education do I need? If I want a more loving and intimate relationship, do I even know what that means? Do I know what's involved? Do I need a mentor? Do I know other people that have the kind of relationship that I would like so that I can talk to them about it? We know that it means changing ourselves on the inside so that that dream can be manifest on the outside. 
We've also learned that taking action requires a plan, right? It's, and it only has to be a plan for the next step. And oftentimes there might be a backup plan. Also, a couple things to be aware of. A plan should have something that can involve you every single day. In the book, he talks about writing a book, and he made a commitment to himself around writing the book, Dream Big, that he would write a thousand words every day. He said most of the days he just threw those words away. But he kept his commitment to writing every day. That's being all in. And then he also talks about that idea of being on the edge of yikes. There's going to be mistakes made. There are going to be oopsies. You are going to find yourself uh, uh, drowning a little bit from time to time. Not literally, but you may feel overwhelmed. You may feel totally out of your comfort zone. You will make no progress unless from time to time you are out of your comfort zone. All right. So, homework. I do have homework as we're closing out uh, this particular book. And the homework is, what's your plan for action? How are you going to become this action hero in your own life? Now, remember, your plan can be simple. It only needs to be the next step. We don't have to worry about the how towards the, that long-term solution of all the problems. But we do have to have a plan around the next step. What is it that I need to do, especially to change myself, to become the person that has what I desire? How do I become the haver instead of the wanter? And so that's your homework. What is your plan for action? Well, I'm going to close today with a, a quote from the end of our book and, of course, a prayer. He says, our actions will not be perfect. Oftentimes, they may not even be close to perfect. Whatever your ambition is, however, keep at it. Will it work? Who knows? Fail trying. Never fail watching. A beautiful truth is that once you get your ambitions in your sights, no amount of failure will keep you from trying again, as long as you don't yield to disappointments. If you have clarity on what you want and why you want it, you'll have what it takes to make as many attempts as are needed. Do something. Descend the cliff. Paddle through the waves. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get in the game. There is no way your ambition can take flight without you taking action, step by step. Don't think about the mistakes you might make Think about the beauty you will see at the end of the journey. Let us pray. There is one power and one presence, one life, one goodness. There is only this one thing. And what I know about it is it is the inspiration of the ages. It is that, that dream made manifest. It is your heart's desire articulated. And as I articulate my heart's desire, as I dream big, as I understand that I'm for it and that that dream is for me and that I'm in it and that I have it, oh my gosh, the magic happens. It goes beyond winning the lottery into simply being the person that is always prosperous, being the person that is always loved, being the person that is always successful because you are that person. And so for each one of us, I know that we take uh, small steps, perhaps, towards that big dream. I know that we're all in. We make a commitment every day towards making small progress, and sometimes more than small progress, towards that goal. I know that we're willing to live in the idea of the yikes, what's next? And I also know that occasionally there will be a setback and I will keep going. And so for this sure knowledge, this sure knowledge that the, in the end there is success, I give thanks. I give thanks in the, just in the vast certainty of God in motion, that grace. And so I release this prayer into the activity, into the action of the law itself, that law that is here to support my every word. I let it be 
And together we say, and so it is. Thank you so much for being here today. Such a pleasure to be with you. I would like to remind you and, and thank you for the many gifts that we've received this, uh, this last year. You know, it always seems a little strange to be talking, uh, really, I in essence, to, to an empty sanctuary. But, uh, but what I do know is that our message, our, our really triumphal message of the science of mind has moved out into the world this year in ways we could never have imagined. And we have so many people giving us donations and thanks throughout the world now. And, and, and that would be a time of conscious offering if you would like to support our ministry uh, please consider uh, going to our website cslportland.org slash donate and there are a variety of ways that you can contribute to the success of our work here uh, including PayPal donations, donations with credit cards. Our address is there if you want to send us in ch uh, a check. And we even use the, uh, the app for people's smartphones called Tithely. Uh, so please consider uh, your donation. It's with great gratitude uh, that we reach out to so many people. And I want to thank you uh, for reaching back towards us with a donation. But wait, I think it's time for some more fabulous music, Lauren. <laughs> We are in heaven 
I'm in heaven. <laughs> Before we close today, just a, a quick reminder about our annual meeting, our annual business meeting. So it starts at 1230 and just a half an hour from now, you'll get the Zoom link on our website at cslportland.org. It's right on the uh, homepage of our website, cslportland.org. Everybody is certainly willing to participate. You'll also see links for downloading our annual business report, uh, uh, a report from the minister on our program, an agenda, and so forth. So feel free to, to read any of those documents or download them as well as attend the meeting. I look forward to seeing a lot of you in about half an hour. Thank you so much. Our closing song is The Truth of Who I Am. Oh, you're right. Okay, bye. No. <laughs> it's like that. All right. Beautiful job, Low Steel and Friends Band. I am love, I am loving, I am loved. I am love, I am loving, I am loved. It's the truth of who I am if I forget. If you happen to be in the Portland, Oregon area, we'd love to have you visit in person. The Portland Center for Spiritual Living is located at 6211 Northeast Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. We have inspirational services at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. every Sunday. We also have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the Online tab. We have a variety of content dedicated specifically for our online listeners. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Our website is also the place to learn more about what's going on at the center or to contact us. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living. <laughs>